In the first video, we textured our wood. In the second video, we made sure that the color was in our area. In the third video, we're going to take it back to the basics of scratch building. And I say basics because scratch building structures start in a very simple way. And you could go all the way to the most advanced board on board exact replica of a wood building. But there's an easy way out. And usually that's where we start in scratch building. You're watching Essentially Wood, a show about... Oh, come on. It's just a show about everything you need to know about building wood. Way back in 2005, 2006, my children were being born. And this is the time in my life when I got into modeling. Two young kids. I needed to be patient. I needed to stay at home. I needed something to do to keep my, you know, spirits up. You know, because, you know, when, when you're a young family and you have your, your first children, it's kind of stressful. And the hobby of scale modeling is actually quite perfect for a young father. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, when I first got into scratch building, I was a stair builder in a wood shop. I've always been carpenter, work with my hands kind of guy. And my first scratch built model was of a, well, it was made out of hardwood, number one, and the hardwood was uh, cut down to scale wood, scale wood with a bandsaw, an industrial bandsaw. So the pieces weren't really the best, but I made this nice little barn for my kids to play with for the next few years. I had somebody help me move a house and that, play, that, that barn disappeared. I imagine I'm probably gonna find that barn again one day in my uncle's house. The point is, is that I didn't think about modeling as a basic thing when I first started. When I first started scratch building, I went whole hog. And really, that's the way, the way I do everything. But it really isn't the way you should do things. And the basic scratch building is probably where you should start when considering how you want to scratch build your scale models. Now where was I? Oh yeah. Okay. So now you might begin to understand why my second video jumped ahead to tell you about the color of the wood. Because in this shot right here, you can see clearly that we have a case of red wood fever. And that really didn't work. And if I did this video before showing you that I was going to make this into an East Coast building, we might have blown a whole bunch of dreams and aspirations there. So it was important that it took care of color first. Now, we're talking about basic scratch building here. And to me, basic scratch building is where you glue your scale wood up against a piece of cardboard or whatever base material that you've got on hand and use that to apply the wood to it. And we're doing this so that there's an extremely uh, a secure bond between the cardboard and the wood and this is the basic part of it like if we did board on board construction uh, it's really advanced with the amount of glue that you use you, you really have to hide your glue and that makes a fragile structure when you really come to think about it because when you're doing board on board construction the scale size of your glue connection is fairly small which will make the structure weak in my opinion for example I'm going to be weathering and painting 
and doing all kinds of things to this wood after gluing it to the cardboard. Number one is that I'll be adding excessive amounts of alcohol to this wall and alcohol actually will soften up white glue like the one I'm using. And have you ever seen a hardwood floor that had water damage and how the boards kind of flip up into like a teepee? Well, this same thing will happen to our wall almost every time we weather it, especially in between the doors where the boards are fairly small, maybe like a quarter inch long. They're going to lose their contact against the wall with the glue. And if we've got a substantial amount of glue like we're adding, when I put my weight back onto the wall to try to reattach the board and it dries that way, it'll glue back to the wall. Lickety split, no problem at all. I have been sharing my scale modeling experiences on YouTube free of charge for over two years now. In that time, I've invested a lot of time and money into this project. Projects like these need funding to grow, and I'm asking for your help. Patreon.com slash Ron Perry. Okay, where were we? We've got a lot to cover still in this video. So we're adding a lot of glue to our cardboard wall. And that means that glue's gonna squeeze out between the boards. Now, you've got to take care of this glue right away, number one. And number two, you don't want to push it into the wood so that it embeds itself. Because then the wood won't be able to soak up alcohol properly in that spot. It might look like a spot in the end. So if you take care of the glue and kind of scrape it off right away, you, you kind of battle against that. And if it's a real big smudge of glue into the wood, scrape it off with your hobby blade. You can get, you can do it, don't worry about it. Just scrape the top layers off and it'll be fine. This is something that happened in the wood shop for me. No problem, just scrape the glue off and you don't have a stain on the wood. But if you allow it to stay, it will stain. Next point is, is when you're cutting your wood off, you want to use a very sharp hobby blade. Don't waste your time with a little number 11 blade at this point because this is a job for a knife that's going to do the cut. You don't want to have a little wimpy cut that you're going to have to break off the boards and then you're going to have strands of wood falling off the end. Sure, in some cases that's very realistic for old and weathered wood, except in this case we don't want that to happen, so use a sharp knife and cut it off nicely. And then we come back with our alcohol. One very challenging and, and important task in this process is that you're standing three walls separately at different times during the production process. So this means that you're potentially going to have three walls that have different colors. Now, we use one product to make our walls match in the end. And the only thing that you need to do is be patient because you need to allow this to dry after each each application because the color will change drastically over in a few hours time. So I'm adding my India ink and alcohol stain that I created in a past video and adding it to the wall. And each time I add it to one wall, I allow it to dry completely because its color is going to settle. And if the other walls don't match the wall that's grayest, do another coat on those walls until they match. In a, in a following video, in a video that I'm going to make, you're going to see that I've, I had to take one of the end walls and actually add another coat of India ink so that they all looked uniform in color. It's important.
Well, I think that's where we should wrap this video up. I think I've got everything on basic scratch building. I don't know. But that's kind of why I'm trying to keep these videos under 15 minutes long so that we can make more of them and get all to all the points that I may forget along the way because there's so many tips and tricks that I could share with you. I have to thank a few people for helping me along the way here. Um, Ed Traxler has been a longtime friend in the model railroading community for me and is very helpful to many modelers and manufacturers. Ed is a very talented guy and is a real hoot to talk to on a video call. Ed contributed to these videos by adding a little flavor to our intro. I would also like to thank Bob Boudreau. Bob Boudreau is really probably the first Canadian model railroader that I ever read about in the early days of me getting into this hobby. Bob is what I consider a friend and a mentor to me. His great photos on our group, the Modelers Guild on Facebook, shares in, in a an immense amount of skill and insight into the artistry of model railroading. Thank you for helping me out all these years on the Modelers Guild. And lastly, I'd like to thank you, my friends in model railroading. Everybody who comes and watches my videos, press the like button or comments down below. You'll never know how much inspiration that you provide to me by saying something friendly. You, you also never know how much I'm destroyed by someone who dislikes my videos or talks crap in the comments below or on a website that allows that form of feedback. And no matter what kind of feedback you get elsewhere, if you're looking for a friendly place to share your modeling and get great feedback every time, go to the Modelers Guild on Facebook. We'll take care of you.